Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. Well, no Trends Journal coming out today. We're taking a break this week, but we're going to give you trends in the news. Remember, the trend is your friend. Ah, today's April 2nd, huh? Yesterday was April Fool's Day. Guess what? Every day is April Fool's Day because we got fools running the world in a cunt tree near you. Yep. Who's your favorite fool? Well, you like the little arrogant true dope up there in Canada? Oh, don't you know my daddy was? My daddy was Pierre. Oh, yeah, you like that Sunak over there? Oh, don't you know I married a billionaire's daughter? Uh, how about uh, Olaf Schultz? Yep. Democracy. Little Katzon Macron with a pecker the size of his pen and his little fucking freak hair. April fools. They're fools that morons and imbeciles call politicians. Oh, they're my politicians. I'll do what they tell me to do. Anyway, going on to having another April fools day, April 2nd. Hey, how about the markets today? Dow down. Oh, the quarter isn't starting well. Ah, that's all right. It's only temporary to probably keep going up. But how about gold prices, huh? Oh, let's see. Gold today hit 2000 It closed at $2,280 an ounce. Oh, no news to Trends Journal subscribers. One of our top trends for 2024. A golden year for gold. We called it. We told you it would happen. Gold's up now about 250 bucks since we said this. An ounce. There's your article. Right there. The trend is your friend. History before it happens. That's what we give you. The trend is your friend and the trends journal is your friend. Oil prices. Oh, hey, oil prices, they're hovering around almost $90 a barrel now for Brent crude. Let's go back a few months ago. They were hanging around $73 a barrel. But... Trends Journal subscribers, we told you so. When again, one of our top trends, we warned about oil prices going up because of World War III. Been writing about it now, week after week, month after month, since the Israel war began when Hamas attacked on April, excuse me, on October 7th. 2023. We said that Israel is going to keep ramping up this war. They're going to attack Lebanon, Syria, and Iran. If they attack Iran, or well, not if, when, you're going to start seeing them prices go up. So before we go into that, I want to take a look at what's going on in the markets. Again, one of your top trends for 2023 was office building bust. All right. We warned about this and we said as a result of this, one of your top trends of 2024 is going to be banks go bust. So here are a couple of articles. They barely, barely talk about it. This is Tuesday. March 26th, S&P Global downgrades outlooks of five regional U.S. banks to negative. Oh, wow. No kidding. Son of a gun. Banks face $2 trillion wall of commercial property debt. This is reported today in the Financial Times. How long we've been warning about this? Remember to subscribe. Click the bell icon for notification because we're giving you and nobody in the world is giving you trends. Again, my books, trend tracking, far better than mega trends, Time Magazine. Trends 2000, international bestseller. Publishing the Trends Journal since uh, 1991. Nobody matches what we do in all the broad ranges of trends. 
two trillion dollar ready banks will have to cut their exposure to commercial real estate because of a two thousand dollars two trillion dollar quote wall of property debt coming due no shit blow me the fuck away guess what they can't cut their exposure they're going to get defaults on the loans they're going to be a banking crisis the likes of which we've never seen that's what's also bringing up gold prices the people that know know they estimate two trillion dollars of u.s commercial real estate debt maturing would have to be right refinanced at much higher interest rates. Duh. This is old news to Trends Journal subscribers. Again, go back to last year around this time, Silicon Valley Bank went bust. Oh my God. Whoa. The markets went berserk. Gold prices went up. That was one bank. Now you're looking at about 300 of the lat from the latest, latest data that are in trouble. S&P Global downgrades outlook for five regional banks. Okay. Report. <laughs> five banks have a combined half trillion dollar in commercial real estate loans. Number one is JP Morgan Chase. More failed banks and office building demolitions likely coming <laughs> before real estate problem ends. This is, this is a great website, by the way. Wall Street on Parade. Study finds Wall Street mega banks have overstated income for years on commercial real estate loans. This just came out today on wall street on parade. This banking crisis is a crisis. Like we've never seen before. Again, it goes back to your office building bust. This just came out today. Office vacancy rate nears 20% to set a fresh record. Moody's. 20% vacant, nobody in them. Your office occupancy rate, according to Castle Systems, is about 51%. Vacant. How are they going to pay their loans on a vacant building? They weren't vacant before the COVID war. They weren't vacant before the COVID war. But thanks to the moronic, imbecilic politicians, the April fools of every fool day. Stay home. You can't go to work. You can't go to school. You can't do this. Yeah. And don't forget when you jerk off, sanitize your hands. They destroyed this economy. Nobody. Oh, they call it a pandemic. They call it a pandemic. The world health organization, W the world Oil organization on March 11, 2020, when the grand total of about under 5,000 people, like 4,280 people died out of 8 billion in, in, in almost two and a half months, more people fell down the stairs at that time and died, but they call it a pandemic. No politicians did it. Not the COVID war moving on. Ah, downtown Portland's office vacancy rate <laughs> highest in the nation. Nearly 30%. Portland was booming. Booming. Huh. New York City's delinquency property taxes saw. Yep. Overdue property taxes are forecast to reach the highest level ever. Jumping by over 30%. Thanks to the COVID war. Thanks. Again, why are gold prices going up? The Israel war, the Ukraine war, banks go bust, office building bust. This is a golden year for gold. Ah, oh, tax in New York City transit jumped 50%. Ah, now everything's fine. Oh, yeah, and you got all the guys, the military there. You go, yeah, let me see you. Take off your clothes. Let me see if you got a gun up your ass. And then, as we warned about oil prices. Israel is going to ramp up the war. So let's go back to last week. Israel airstrikes in Lebanon kill nine people, including paramedics. Who cares? They're only paramedics. Israel could kill anybody they want. They're the chosen people. Death toll in Israel airstrikes in Syria. Is Aleppo rise to 52. This was on March 30th. 
on Saturday. This is Tuesday. And then, ah, yesterday, Israeli airstrike hits Iranian consulate building at Damascus. High-level Iranian generals reported Kili killed. So they killed several Iranians and several Syrians. They bombed a consulate. You want to know why oil prices are going up? We warned you about, now we didn't warn you, we forecast this. We said this was going to happen. This is just the beginning. Again, as I've said, oil prices could spike to $130 a barrel, and that's going to crash the economy and crash the global equity markets. But don't worry. When all else fails, they take you to war. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Sunday reiterated his resolve to launch a new offensive in southern Gaza. The looming operation is absolutely needed to achieve, quote, victory over Hamas, he insisted. Oh, if he insisted, then it must be true. So, what did Israel do yesterday? Israel strike kills seven aid workers in Gaza, World Central Kitchen Halts operations. The people are starving there. It's genocide in, everybody, in front of everybody's eyes, and they keep on doing it. This is disgusting. And again, remember, let's go back and go back to your trends journal. We've been reporting on this constantly. I oh, remember about the 200 people they killed when they, when they were with food trucks. Yeah. Oh, we're sorry. We didn't mean to do it. And then there's this little clown boy, this little arrogant piece of fucking scum shit. He calls himself like a deacon or something, a deacon bullshit. Yeah. Some cocksucker. Some fucking cocksucker congressman. Congressman. April Fools. Congressman calls to bomb Gaza like Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Tim Wahlberg. Tim Dickhead. Tim Scumbag. Tim fucking prick. Tim murderous scumbag piece of garbage. Oh, he's your... Now, you obey him. He's your politician. He'll tell you what to do. Yep. Rather than provide humanitarian aid to Gaza, the U.S. should ensure it is subjected to atomic bombing the way Nagasaki and Hiroshima were at the end of the Second World War, Republican congressman said in remarks. The comments by, yep. Yep. Tim Wilbur in Michigan. Yep. It should be like Nagasaki and Hiroshima, Warburg said. Get it over quick. Let us little piece of fucking scum. Let us little piece of fucking shit. No outrage. You know why? Again, go to your trends. Do you remember, remember when little Chucky Schumer, little fucking... The senator in New York, and besides, I love to suck off the public and tell people what to do. Yeah, that little fuck face. Remember when he said, Oh, Netanyahu got to go? Blah, 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 blah. We said, This is nothing but bullshit. We said, Everything in the United States is their talk. It's all talk to make the people believe that they're, they're against what's going on. Again, genocide, it's okay. It's the Israeli way from Trump, Biden to Congress. And if you hate gen you hate Israel, you know, you 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 you, know, you, you got to support genocide. Anyway, this is the commentary from Al Jazeera. And again, this is Saturday. Leaders, activists slam U.S. for sending more arms to Israel. The United States has green lighted the transfer of two point five billion dollar weapon package, comprising bombs, fighter jets to Israel according to the Washington Post. Yep. And then the Biden administration, this is from yesterday, antiwar.com. Biden administration expected to approve massive $18 billion arms deal for Israel to keep slaughtering the innocent people. Where's the outrage? Where is the outrage as our country is rotting in front of us? 
Bridges are collapsing. Roads are falling apart. Homeless filling the streets. Migrants everywhere. America keeps going to war as the nation keeps going to shit. Yep. This is an article from Wall, uh, Wall Street, Wall Street, World Socialist website. Biden, Obama, and Clinton defend U.S. Israeli slaughter of Palestinians. Clinton and Obama categorically defended Biden's policy in Gaza and declared their support for Israeli state. When a protester interrupted Obama, they raised $25 million for Biden. $25 million to run for president. Again, democracy. You don't have any money, you can't run for shit. And you got to be bought out by the people that are in charge. And he got, when a protest interrupted Obama, the former president snapped back. You can't just talk and not listen. That's what the other side does. When you talk, not listen. You mean listen to your fucking shit spewing out of your phony fucking mouth? Oh, Obama, the guy quoted in the book, Double Down, I'm really good at killing people. The Obama that gave us the Afghan troop surge. Yep. How stupid and gutless can you be to obediently follow your ignorant, arrogant political leaders? The Obama that lied his way to become president during the Iraqi crisis, saying he was going to be a peace candidate. Piece of shit candidate. I want that guy Gaddafi out of there. Yeah, it destroyed Libya, the richest country in Africa, where people had more rights and benefits than anywhere else. Destroyed Libya, Syria, over oh, 6 million refugees. Assad has to go. We got to steal the oil. We keep stealing it in the east over there. Yeah. And this is the crap they come out with. And you're banned from the media. White House defends Shifa hospital massacre that killed over 400. There were Hamas fighters hiding in a Shifa hospital. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller said, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That's why we. That's why they destroyed over 70% of Gaza, the people's homes. That's why you have millions of people homeless. They're getting Hamas. They're hiding in their houses. They're in the basement. They're in tunnels. And Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. Israel illegally confiscated Huh. nearly 700 acres of West Bank land since the Israel war began on October 7th, 2023. Seven, nearly seven, what did I say? 700, 7,660 66, 6,672 acres. God gave us this land. That's what that other scumbag who plays prime minister of Israel said. Isaac Herzog. What do you mean God gave you this? What if I don't believe in your God? Can you handle that? Oh, no, we're the chosen people. You have to believe in our God. This is in violation of the Geneva Convention and Article 242 of the United Nations. Never mentioned. Never mentioned. They're stealing land in front of everybody's eyes, and the people that fight back to get their land back, why, they're terrorists, and they attack us. So if another country came to America, or Canada, or France, all these countries that stole people's land. <laughs> and the people fought back against the invaders, they're terrorists. This is the bullshit going on. And then on the Ukraine war front, prepare for Putin pivot to invade you at, to invade us as Baltic states, ramping up wars. We were warned. Europe, Europe has entered pre-war era. That was this guy, Poland, uh, this, the, the Prime Minister Tusk said back on March 30th, and they just came out again, and he said Europe's peaceful era has ended. Well, actually, he said this earlier. That was, he just said on March 30th, 
He said, the times of peace are over. The post-war era is over. And then he just said on March 30th that the uh, war is no longer a concept from the past. It is real. And it started over two years ago. Yep. Every NATO member has military personnel in Ukraine, according to Estonia, which means they're at war with Russia. And then again, we look at the world and see what's going on. When the COVID war began, we warned that when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. They're going to lose it financially, spiritually, physically, mentally. And they have. These are two articles that just came out that we've been warning people about now since the COVID war began. We said this was going to happen. We forecast it. This is the headline from Al Jazeera on Monday. Why are so many young Americans suffering from mental dis distress? The number of young men and women suffering from depression and other mental health disorders in the United States has risen sharply since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic according to a series of reports. Not a, not a start of the COVID-19 pandemic, the start of the COVID war when politicians locked down people and sent kids home. And in the United States, there are 73 million one to 17 year olds. And according to the data, under 2000 of them died from COVID from January, 2020 to June, 2023, when they stopped doing the data. And it fucked them up. Front page article from the toilet paper record on Saturday, March 30th. The pandemic effect. Absence from schools is schools is soaring. Habit of daily attendance broken and the shift turns education optional. Across the country, students with heightened anxiety are opting to stay home rather than face the classroom. Again, we said this was going to happen. It's happening. I talked about the office building bust. I talked about bank scope bust. All brought to you by the COVID war. And now people's minds are going bust. The worst is yet to come. We have to unite for peace. So we're going to die in war. Do what you can to donate to Occupy Peace. And remember... As I said, the politicians, is April Fool's Day. It's every day. So tell the politicians how you feel. You want to get this T-shirt. Then you get the T-shirt by going to trendsjournal.com. You see shop, and you can get it. And there's the back of the shirt. Because they're fucking over us, man, in a way that I don't like to be fucked. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow with Salenti and the Judge. 6 p.m. Eastern time. See you then.